Hey everybody, this is Ryan King, and in this Blender tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this Jello monkey head in Blender. Uh, we're going to be using Blender version uh, 2.83, and I'm also going to be using an HDRI from HDRI Haven, so I'm going to be using this Snowy Park 01. The link will be in the video description if you want to download this. And to make this Jello animation, we're going to be using soft body physics in Blender. So I'm just going to start off by deleting everything, and you can also see I have my screencast keys right here if you want to see what I'm pressing. Um, so I'm just going to press Shift A, and let's just add a monkey head. But you can add whatever you want if you want to uh, just like model a piece of jello or something, you can do that. I'm going to be using this monkey head. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to join the eyes with the actual monkey head, because if you tap into edit mode, and you deselect everything and just hover your mouse over the eye and press L, that's gonna select all the linked vertices. And as you can see, the eye actually isn't attached to the head. So if we go inside the monkey head, you can see right here, here's the eye. Um, so what we're gonna do is just hold down Alt and just select this edge and then we'll just scale it down like that. And then I'm just gonna go over here, just press Alt and select the loop of the eyelid. And then we can just press E to extrude that, just scale it out. Uh, like this, and then we can just uh, select this loop and then shift select, shift and alt and select this loop, and then we've selected both of them, and then uh, you can just press F3 to search, and I'm just going to use the uh, bridge edge loops, so you can just type that in, and then just click on that right there, and you can see it's taken both of these and it's joined them together. Um, so now, if you just deselect everything and press L with your mouse over the I, you can see it's joined together. So now it's one mesh. So we need to do that with the other eye too, but an easier way to do this is to just delete half of it and then just add a mirror modifier. So let's just go into wireframe, we'll deselect everything, we'll just box select half of the monkey and delete all the vertices, and then over here on the modifiers, we can just add a mirror modifier and then apply that in object mode because if you're in edit mode, it won't let you apply that. So just apply that like this and now you can see it's all one mesh together. Let's save this file uh, real quick. So let's just press uh, control S to save the file. And I'm just gonna save this in a folder. As you can see, I've done this a few times already. So I'm just gonna save that Blender file. Okay, now let's go add the soft body physics. So I'm just gonna go over here to the physics tab and let's just add a soft body right here and then also let's just bring this monkey head up so i'm just going to bring it up like this and I'll also just rotate it on the x kind of over like this and now if you press the space bar to play you can see it's just wobbling up and down or you can also just press this i just have the space bar set up to press play and you can see it's kind of wobbling up and down like this and that's because we need to turn off this goal so if we turn that off and then we do it again you can see now uh, the monkey head will just continue to fall and fall in the infinite world of Blender until the simulation ends. So let's just go back over here, just zoom into this. You can actually press the period on the number pad and that'll just uh, zoom you into the monkey head. And so now we need to add something for the monkey head to fall on top of. So I'm just gonna add a plane. We'll scale that up. And now if you do it, it's just gonna go right through it. And that's because we need to tell Blender uh, that this needs to collide with the monkey head. So let's just add the collision modifier, or not the collision modifier, the collision physics on the plane. And now if we just play this, you can see now the monkey head's just gonna fall together and it's gonna just turn into, big, into a big pile of vertices. Uh, quite nice. Um, so uh, one thing we can do is we can add a subsurf modifier. So let's actually go to the modifiers, add modifier, and we'll add a subdivision surface just to smooth that out. And then we can also just do uh, smooth shading. So I use right click select. So I'm just gonna uh, press W and then click on shade smooth. Um, you can just also go object and shade smooth right there. So now if we play this, you can see it looks a little bit nicer, but the monkey head still just looks like a piece of paper or something just crumpling up. Um, so we need to give it uh, some strength to it. So it kind of acts more like rubber or jello. And I did just want to say real quick that uh, you should have the soft body physics before the subdivision surface modifier, because if you have that switched, if you have the subdivision surface first and then the soft body, Blender's going to have to calculate all of the uh, vertices. So if you just have the soft body first and then subdivide it, uh, then the simulation time is going to be a lot faster. Okay, so let's just go over here with the monkey head selected over to the physics, and then let's just uh, open up this edges and... You can see here we need to turn on stiffness in the edges and then also this bending we need to set this to a value i'm going to just start off with 10 
And now if we press the spacebar or play it, you can see now it's actually kind of acting like jello. <laughs> I want to turn this bending down. Let's maybe turn it to five and see what that looks like. And you can see now it bends a lot more and it actually bumps up like that. It's pretty funny. And I actually found that uh, if you rotate the monkey head kind of like this, then the monkey is actually going to fall on its face. So if you just do that, whoa. <laughs> Oh man, oh, <laughs> and he just falls flat on his face. And if you kind of rotate this way back, it might end up like bouncing backwards. Whoa, okay, so there we go. So anyways, you can just play around with this bending and uh, just get it to a rubberiness that you like. And I think I like five, that looks pretty good. And then also, if you want to change the speed of it, you can click on the simulation tab and you can change the speed. So if you want to make it like really fast, you could maybe make that two and double it. And that way the simulation is going to be a lot faster. Or if you want to like make it look like a slow-mo video or something, you could maybe change it to like 0.4. And then that way it's going to be a lot slower. You're going to be able to see a lot more detail in the simulation. <laughs> I'm just going to set it to one though, because I like one better. That's funny, whoom whoom, and his ears like flapping around. So that's uh, pretty good. I'm gonna actually bake it now. So uh, we can just find the uh, cache or cache right here, and then we can just bake the simulation. Uh, I'm just gonna set it to like 150 because I don't need it to be that long, and then the end frame down here, I'm just gonna set this to 150, okay. And then uh, just make sure you save this file again, just in case so that if it crashes, uh, and then let's just hit bake and you can just wait for it to bake. And there we go. Okay, it's finished now. Okay, so now if we play that, it's going to be really smooth because it's actually baked it. So it's actually thrown it in the memory. So now we can just... Uh, move along here and we can really see what it's going to look like. So if you want to make any changes, you totally can. There's a lot of different settings you can do, uh, but I found that bending to be one of the uh, biggest factors in changing how it looks. Okay, so I'm good. this is what I'm going to use. I think this looks a lot like Jello, and this is what I'm going to do. So I'll just save this again. And now that it's baked, we can edit this object because I want to add a backdrop. Um, if you edit this object, though, and then redo the simulation, it can actually cause issues because what I'm going to do is select these two vertices and just extrude them up. And then uh, I'm just going to add a subsurface by pressing Control 2, and then I'll tab into edit mode, and I'll just add a loop cut right there and right there. So now if you want to redo the simulation, you should probably use a different object uh, for your ground plane, just because this uh, shape is going to actually mess up the simulation. So I'll just bring this out a bit, and I'm just going to scale this all out a little bit like this, and then I'll also shade that smooth. And I think we might need to recalculate the normals, so I'll just tab into edit mode, make sure everything's selected, and press Shift N, and there, now the, re the normals are recalculated. And then I'm going to need to add a camera, so I'll just add a camera right here. And then I can just uh, move to a view that I like, and then I can press uh, Control Alt Zero, uh, Number Pad Zero, and that'll just jump the camera to where I am. And then I can just move in and just scale this out a bit, and then find a good view that I want. I'm just going to select the camera and just kind of move it around till I find a place that I like. Okay, now I'm going to add in that HDRI lighting, so I'll just go over here to this world. Just click right here and we're going to change it to environment texture and then let's just click on open right here and then i'll add in this snowy park 01 hdri and i'm just going to use the 1k version just because that'll save uh, memory we don't need it to be a super high quality image uh, we can still get some really nice lighting so now if i just go into rendered mode you can see uh, here it is and i am using the uh, new viewport denoising because i recently got an rtx card so i can use this uh, this super awesome uh, viewport denoising. And uh, this viewport denoising uh, should work with other GPUs too. Um, I heard that they're working on making it available for other GPUs too, uh, but I do know that it works with RTX GPUs. So uh, it's really nice and you can preview things a lot better. So it's really cool. And then I'm also going to press Control B, just box select the camera just so that it'll only render what's in the camera. So it'll render quicker. I'm going to go and I'm going to just scroll down here to the color management and I'm just going to make sure this is filmic. And then I'll just make the look uh, medium high contrast. That'll just make uh, more accurate lighting. 
Okay, and then let's just select this plane back here. I'm gonna go to the materials, add a new material, and I'm just gonna have this kind of a blue purpley kind of color. And then I'll click on the monkey head and let's go to the shading tab right here. Okay, and then I'll just click on new. We can just call this jello or whatever you like. And now let's just set up the jello material. So I'm going to just go into rendered mode again, just so that we can preview that. And then I'm gonna turn the base color to red because jello is usually red. Um, and then I'm gonna turn the roughness all the way down so it's really reflective and I'll turn the specular all the way up. So now it's like a super reflective uh, mesh. And then I also want it to be a bit transparent. So I'm gonna press shift A right here. We'll add the glass shader. And then I'm gonna also add a mix shader. So I'll mix glass and the principal together and just make sure the glass roughness is set to zero. And then I'm just gonna make the glass kind of like a pinky red color. And then I'll just put the glass on the top and then the principal on the bottom. And now if we make it all the way to one, it's gonna be using only the principal. Then if we make it all the way to zero, it's only gonna be using the glass. So I want it to mostly use the glass, but I still want to have that uh, really reflectivity. So I'm just gonna set it to something like this. And then that'll be mostly glass, but it'll have a little bit of that principled. Now it doesn't look very good right now, but once we add some more lights to, for reflections, it's definitely gonna look a lot better. So I'm just going to go back into the layout and I'll just uh, move my 3D cursor right here and I'll just add a plane and I'm gonna use this plane for lighting. So I'll just move this plane over, move it up, and then I can uh, rotate this. You can also double tap R just to rotate that around and I'll tap into edit mode, select these two points and just bring them out like that and just skip, bring this down. Okay, and then I'm gonna click on new. I'll make this an emission and then I'll turn the strength up to maybe like 10. And now you can see it's giving it these reflections right here and I think this adds a lot and makes it look a lot better. Um, and I'm just gonna set that to pure white. Okay, and then you can just move these around to make it look really nice how you like. And then I'm also gonna maybe add another one and just uh, move it kind of behind the monkey. And you can see if uh, you can see it right here. And if you want to get rid of that, so uh, the camera can't see that, you can go uh, right here to the object settings, scroll down, and then on the visibility, you can turn off camera on the ray, ray visibility. And that way the camera can't see the light, but it's still there. So you can see it's like invisible, but it's still shooting off light. And then I can press shift D duplicate this and bring it over here. And I'll just rotate it just to add some more reflections on this side. And I might even turn up maybe the strength to 15 just to make it brighter. And there we go. So that's what I'm gonna do. Of course, you can set this up however you like, uh, but I like this kind of lighting setup. Okay, and that's pretty good. I do wanna make this background a little bit darker. So I'll make it a little bit darker blue, maybe make it a little bit darker and maybe a tiny bit more purple. Something like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, so now let's just set up some render settings. If you wanna make your render settings go faster, some things you can do is to turn down the sampling um, and you can also uh, turn down the resolution right here. If it's taking a long time to render and you want it to go faster, you can turn down the resolution. Um, and then let's go over here to the light paths and we can turn down some of the light paths just to speed up our render times. Um, so I found this should probably be set to like four because if you turn it way down, you can see it starts to look all black and weird. So it seems like four is pretty good. Diffuse and glossy can be at two. Uh, we don't need any transparency, but we do need some transmission. So I'm just gonna leave the transmission just at four, um, but turning down these values will make uh, the render faster because it doesn't have to calculate as much uh, light paths. Um, and then these, I found that it doesn't really make it look any different. So we can just turn those off and that's looking a lot better. So I can just render this now. Okay, and now it's done rendering. Uh, that didn't take too long on my computer. And then let's go over to compositing right here because we need to add a denoise because right now it's a little bit noisy, so we're just gonna add a denoise. I'm just gonna click on use nodes so that we can use the uh, compositing nodes. I'll press shift A and I'm just gonna add the denoise, drop it in there. And then I also have the node wrangler enabled, so I'll just hold down control and shift and click and that'll add a viewer node. You can also just press shift A and add a viewer and connect it to the denoise node. 
And then let's make an output for our images because we're going to need to render these out as pictures. And then we're going to use Blender's video editor to put them together as a video. So right here, I'm just going to uh, set this output. Okay, so I've just uh, put these in a folder. So I'm just going to press accept right down here. It's behind me so you can't see it. Okay, and there we go. So now we have our output. I'm going to be rendering these out to PNG files. You can also render them out as JPEGs. Uh, so let's just do that. So now you can just uh, save your file again and then just press Control F12 to render the animation. And uh, right here, I've already rendered these images out a few times, so I'm not going to render it all over again. But you can see here's my images. So now I'm just going to throw these into Blender. So I'll just uh, grab a new Blender scene and I'm just going to uh, click on video editing. You can just also uh, you can also just click on the splash screen right here, and then you can click on video editing right here. I have this tab already set up right here. And then let's just press Shift A. I'm just going to add image sequence. And then I'm just going to select all the images using A, and then I'll click on add image strip. And that'll add these uh, pictures as a video strip. So now you can see there's my jello monkey head. And I'm just going to set the end frame. And this animation was uh, 175 frames, so I'll just set that to the end frame. Uh, the other one was 150, so you can just set the end frame to the end right there. So let's just export this out to a video. So the file format, I'm just going to change this to FFmpeg video, and then I'll just save it on the desktop. The encoding right here, I'm just going to set the container as MPEG4. The video codec, I'm just going to set to H.264 right there and then on the audio it doesn't have any audio so we don't need to use any or if you want to add in some audio then i would use acc or mp3 so i'm just going to use no audio for this um, and then you can just set the name jello like that and then you can just control f12 and that'll render out to a final video and here's the final render so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you learned something and if you want to share your result with me you can put a link in the comments so i can see what you guys create i like seeing what you guys create um and thank you for watching and i'll see you in another tutorial